start of a new weekly vlog. I am sat on my sofa with my makeup bag next to me, about to do my makeup for the day. I've got a filming day and a bit of an errand running day today. I need to go to Ikea to get some bits for my new wardrobe and to get some bits for a video that I'm going to be filming either this week or next week. Um, so I'm just sitting here and I'm watching on um, YouTube. I'm watching... Wait, where's my concealer brush? Why is my makeup bag such a mess? Here we go. I'm watching like wardrobe declutter videos on uh, YouTube because I find that just the best way of motivating myself to like or like at least get in the mood to sort my life out and declutter. That is like one of my best tips for if you really need to sort out but you're really hesitant is just to watch someone else do it on YouTube. It really honestly helps me get in the like frame of mind and you can see just how much of a difference like decluttering makes on someone so it's one of my favourite little tips so I'm just watching some content might do a little bit of a tidy upstairs and then I need to get in the car and drive to Wembley let me put my tea down I just had an Amazon package arrive which are some like underwear dividers for my new underwear drawer which I'm so excited about doing because I don't think I've showed this before but oh my god this is the cutest thing look at Maurice that's my wearable blanket he's obsessed with sleeping on it which is just the cutest thing. Um, so this is where I can currently keep my underwear. And it's such a huge, heavy unit. But it hardly fits anything in. Like the size of this. But the drawers are actually not very big at all. So yeah, we're going to be getting rid of this. I mentioned in the decluttering vlog that I've got coming up. That we're probably going to put this on Facebook Marketplace. Or maybe like worst case scenario, take it to a charity shop. That I need to like decant all of this ideally into one drawer of my new wardrobe so that's what i'm gonna do now oh you fit in it so you good boy i know this is the same oh that's so much fun for cats i have just come back from a little run to the shop to get it some bits for lunch got some really nice looking smoked salmon in the fridge and i just can't think of anything else to have smoked salmon with other than cream cheese and a bagel and um, so that's what i got i'm not a massive fan of like salmon with egg so cream cheese on a seeded bagel very excited about that i also got some raspberries i'm really into my raspberries at the moment I'm in Ikea and I'm, I've am i ended up in the Tupperware section and I'm trying really hard not to buy any Tupperware because I don't need it but I love it so much. I do love how versatile these sets are. You could use them, look at that. Trainer display case or like for kitchen stuff. So versatile. I used to have a set of these in my office. This Ikea is so bougie. It has like photo, like selfie spots. <laughs> are the um, storage containers that I've got for the top shelf of my wardrobes and they're so handy because they open up really wide. I am back, I've got all my bits but oh my god I've also picked up the worst headache. I'm getting headaches all the time at the moment which is a little bit worrying. I got some really nice bits for the bedroom which I'm actually going to be doing for a reel with Ikea which is so exciting but I got some nice like cushion covers and loads of nice plants for the bedroom and I got some storagey bits as well which I'm going to take up now for my wardrobe. I also picked up some nice hangers, nice wooden ones and some really nice like little basket so I'm very happy with everything I got let's take some of the bits up now when I was in Marrakesh recently I think I vlogged that I had a, a carpet weaving workshop which was so freaking cool and they gifted us this really cute like hand woven cushion cover and I, I didn't measure it before I went <laughs> but I picked up this hoping that it would fit and actually 
<laughs> I really hope that does fit. Let's have a look. Hope, hope, hope. Because I just think this is the most beautiful and it has such good memories with it as well. So, <laughs> come on. <laughs> it does fit. <laughs> oh, that is so cute. I love that. I think this might be a nice one for the spare room. One of the things I'm most excited about was I managed to pick up this. Um, unit for my jewellery pull out drawer so I can put these in now and this is the one that I wanted it's got the ring section on here as well my weekly vlog just went up without a thumbnail without a description box without a title because my trip to Ikea it took so long and then I had to shut my eyes for half an hour because my headache was just so bad. And one of you have just commented on that vlog. Sorry, Maurice is scratching a rug. Do you mind? One of you have just commented that ceremonial cacao can cause headaches. I wonder if that's why I've had non-stop headaches for the past week. I don't think I'm having a massive dose of it, but maybe I'll dose down going forward i actually haven't been sleeping very much either recently i'm gonna make dinner now i'm gonna make a gusto we have got a chicken and coconut dal with rice and garlic naan i'm so hungry and definitely up for this i've also been listening to a new podcast it's not a new podcast but it's one that i haven't really listened to before and it's true crime it's called red handed by wondery and um, yeah, I'm really enjoying their episodes. They seem like they've done a lot of research into the cases that they're telling you about. So I'm currently just listening to an episode about a cannibal called Isai Segawa, Segawa, the Kobe cannibal. And oh my God, what a disturbing case. I don't think I'd really even heard about this case before, which is weird. I must have listened to an episode about him before, but oh my God, it's awful. Can you imagine eating a human? <laughs> the fact that anyone would want to eat a human, that is so weird. But also like talking about this guy's upbringing and the fact that like he had complications when he was younger and as a result, his mother like proper protected him and coddled him and like was very protective and it just makes me worried like it just makes me worried that you could have so much of an impact onto your child that they would become a serial killer like that is definitely one of the things that puts me off having children the fact that you just don't know what they're going to be like when they're older and they could turn out to be a murderer like there's no guarantee that your child is going to grow up into a nice person and I don't know what I would be as a parent. Like, I don't think I would, like... Yeah. I'm not saying, like, I would be a super protective parent, especially with a boy. Like, I'm very much... I feel like I would have my child make their own decisions and make their own mistakes so that they learn from them. You're only ever going to learn and grow as a person if you make mistakes and learn from them. I feel like I'm waffling and I feel like I could maybe get some bad feedback from talking about something like this but also so many serial killers are because of their upbringing and it just worries me like what if something happened that would make my my child a serial killer it is a concern it's one of the reasons i'm very divided about having children i'm not, I'm not gonna lie oh my god can you see my ex is flaring up talking about this my eczema has been so bad this year as well, guys. I feel like I'm I'm just having a year where I'm falling apart. It's all right at the moment. It's been like all up here and all up my neck. I've been putting like steroid cream on it, which is so bad. I really try and avoid doing that because it thins your skin and makes your skin like, yeah, oh my God, it really thins your skin out. So I really don't want to put too much on my neck, but I'm like scratching my skin off because it's so itchy and dry and no moisturizer is helping. Um, I've like tried like slapping it to help it and it, it comes like all down here as well. You probably can't see because it isn't looking too bad at the moment, but it, it really flared up in January and I've put it down to one of three things. I think I've worked it out. It's one of these three things. One, 
I changed my deodorant at the start of the year. I stopped using my Sure Maximum Protection deodorant that I've used for like seven, no, about 10 years I've been using that. I stopped using that and I've been using a spray instead. That's number one. Number two, started knitting. I'm worried that maybe I've got a wool allergy, but part of me thinks that I would have the eczema all over my hands as well. If it was a wool allergy and not just on my neck, you know what I mean? You'd think it'd be wherever the wool is touching and it's a lot of touching my hands rather than my neck. But that that's another thing that changed in January. Oh, and then the final thing that changed in January is I started using a topical tretinoin, which is a much higher dose than was in my Skin Me Daily Doser. I'm still using my Skin Me Daily Doser, but that's more for kind of managing my rosacea rather than acne and this slightly higher strength tretinoin i am worried is causing it and again it shouldn't because i'm just putting it on my face i'm not putting it anywhere like here but i know that it can travel down even with you without you doing anything so yeah it's one of those three things maybe it's a combination of all of them that has just flared my eczema up so bad but if you have any recommendations for products let me know Right, I need to stop waffling and I need to cook now. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, guys. So there's this guy down the high street who, like, is there every day and he's shouting Jamaican patties. And every time I walk past him and I feel sorry for him because I've never seen anyone buy a patty. So anyway, I said to G, can we go to lunch? <laughs> because I just feel sorry for him. So we went. We got a patty, we got them home. But I realised once we were there, right, that he doesn't even hand make them, home make them. They're not homemade. They're like from a packet because it has a picture of the packet on the, with the ingredients on the, on his little table. So we've been had. And they're bright yellow, which I don't think is. They're free from MSG though, I've just found them. They, I mean, I think they'll be delicious, but we've definitely been, we've definitely paid too much for these. <laughs> but it's good to support small business, you know, so I'm, I'm happy all the same. There's your one chicken, that looks like the vegetable one. Mmm, mmm, that's actually good. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit spicy and a little bit dry. More is. Oh my God. Yeah. It'll be right. <laughs> Go on then. <laughs> hey. Are you getting down from that? Maurice, you clever boy. Don't fall down there. Hey guys, it is Friday, it's Friday evening, we're going on a date night to our favourite restaurant who are hosting like a one-off supper club to celebrate their Sky Garden. So Brunswick East in Dawson is our favourite place for like brunch, it's like honestly one of my favourite restaurants in London. Um, they in the last couple of years built a Sky built a sky Garden where they grow their own vegetables, I'm going to see Sorry about hay fever. And they're hosting like a summer solstice supper club tonight, which is so lovely. So G and I are going. It's like a six course tasting menu. And this is what I'm wearing. So this is very unusual for me, this kind of outfit. But I've been inspired by my new wardrobe. So I'm wearing this dress that I got from Zara. It's like a sheer lacy number asymmetric at the bottom, I teamed it with some black ballet flats and a black blazer. Oh, I keep forgetting, I need to put earrings in. That's why I feel a bit naked. But yeah, I really like this outfit, it's very different for me. on a little 
little weekend break to the seaside. So one of my best friends moved to Margate a couple of years ago and we haven't visited her or her house yet or her cat. I've never met her cat called Patsy before. So we are driving up today to spend the day and evening with her and then we'll drive back down to London tomorrow. But yeah, I am so excited. I've never really properly been to Margate before. I went to Dreamland once for an event, but that was it. Like I haven't seen anything else so yeah i'm really looking forward to it me and g are gonna get there a little bit early and go for brunch and a little mooch want to go to the shell grotto because that sounds right up my street and then i will meet my friend later and have a catch up and some dinner um we're currently doing a little pit stop at my sister's house because <laughs> My sister's been using my ASOS account. I shouldn't say that, should I, in case ASOS ban, <laughs> ban people from sharing an account. Um, but I accidentally got something delivered, something I ordered delivered to her by accident, so I need to go and pick it up. But they're not in this weekend, they're at a wedding. So she's like hidden it in Jeannie's Wendy house for <laughs> me. So I need to go and try and find this parcel in their garden. <laughs> this is so funny. She's still in here. <laughs> oh my god, this is just the cutest thing ever. There it is. <laughs> Secure the goods. Secure the goods. I've come to a vinyl, vinyl shop called Cliffs for breakfast. I've got a coffee and I've ordered a lot, a lot of a big, big breakfast. Look at this. It's huge, but it's got like smoked beans and bacon lardons and seeds and then we've got some hash browns as well okay we're approaching the shell grotto and for some reason i thought it was on a beach but no it's like down this random residential road i just had no idea this is gonna be so weird imagine buying a house and like finding a shell grotto in the basement that's fucking weird this is so random <laughs> Oh my god. That was so weird. Something really weird has definitely happened in there. But maybe I've been listening to too many true crime podcasts recently. I thought I'd find it really like your beautiful like shells and like magical or like fairy like but no it was fucking creepy and also if you've got that typophobia the fear of clusters you would not <laughs> you do not want to go in there even it made me feel a bit like queasy it's so weird <laughs> what a weird place <laughs> love margate already <laughs> my friend also told us about this like vintage antique emporium so we're gonna go in here next it's on the same road as the shell grotto 